The referee's ready to go. Crowd are certainly ready to go here in Cannes. And the team's lined up for this best of five set encounter on day one of week three on the FIVB VNL. The host France then in the blue with the serve. First to three, takes the spoils. And away we go. Well, how many times do we get this? First rally, always a cracker. And <laughs> Tilly does the business from the back line. Pipe attack then from the coach's son. Barely a smile registered. There's a long way to go in this one. Great opener, though. Really nice rally to start. So often the case, the teams are fired up. They're really focused in. A great serve from Tonyuti. Good work. Blockers uh, functioning really well at the net. Hirsch out. And Guppet and LaRue saying no touch. So Germany will have to challenge if they disagree. Did that clip a fingernail on Irvin and Guppet's left hand. So Germany challenge. They're going to ask the question through coach Andrea Gianni. Challenge, I'm sure, will be for did this touch the block or not of Hirsch's spike. The big man, Gunther, not sure. Shrug of the shoulders to his coach. Here we go. No, that's clear of the hands. No touch. Germany. Lose a challenge, two challenges per set. If you win it, you keep it. If you lose it, you lose it. Off pace serve, easy pass for Germany. And that's better from Hirsch. Takes the block out of the equation and blasts it cross court. Gives it a good thump, does Hirsch, and he's got that one away very nicely. Good set as well from Zimmerman, pressuring LaRue. Goes Gunther, two meters and 11 tall. Lovely shot. Almost dismissive from Irving Gapet. Used to be coached by his father, that was his first pro contract, but there came a point when Gapet moved on, and I think his dad made quite a famous comment, something along the lines of it's time for someone else to try and coach him. But what a talent he's turned into. Beautiful. Really nice run from Zimmerman. A few slightly disappointed faces, I would say, on the French bench. I think they wanted a run out here in Cannes tonight against Germany. But Lanil. At the moment in favour, and Gapet and Kevin Tilly getting the star. France get away with that one. Not the best of sets from Tonyuti. Fires it on the reverse to Boye, but it was all out of time, and Boye forced a tip, but fortunately for him, gets it down to the floor before Zenger can get there. So no Zenger Zingers yet at the moment. Great defender on his day. He's the number 10 for Germany. So much of this game is going to be about service reception. Well, each team deals with the service power. France able to bring that little bit extra from the baseline. It'll be LaRue next. Look how deep the German reception unit is. They knew what was coming from LaRue, so they positioned themselves just inside the baseline. Expecting the power, and LaRue's shoved it in the net. Lewis Reichert back to serve for Germany. Just 194 tall, I say just, it's all relative in this height-driven sport. A good start from Kevin Tilly, the local boys off to a, a flyer here. One huge pipe hit and then this nice off-pace cut just in front of the block and the defence. <laughs> Legend. Not quite happy with what his team are doing at the moment.
Yeah, wonderful play, both sides of the net. It's a really big middle unit for France. At the moment, Lou, LaRue and uh, Le Goff. Le Goff stands two metres and six. LaRue stands 2.09. It's not easy for the German attackers to get past the blockers, but on that occasion, Raquet just using the block to wipe off. Service reception from France has been okay. Dare I suggest Toniuti not quite on the money with his setting at the moment. That wasn't the case, I promise you, in the warm-up. Stephen Boyer put one off the floor and into the top row of the stands here. Horrendous hit. Good work, France still in the rally. Gapet goes off pace. Zenger with a pickup. No, too tight to the net, too easy for Le Goff to stick a big claw over. Get hold of that one. Bear of a man is Le Goff. Riker was never going to win that joust. Tilly. Baseline. Oh, what an attack. That's phenomenal. Little side tandem from Germany, and this is what Reichert needs, a free net. And he'll put those away all day. Great take. Initially from Gunther, the middle blocker, to cause the deception, and a brilliant set from Zimmerman to give his outside spiker a free shot. Ball down to a good serve receive, though. If you don't get that ball to the setter, you can't run those attacks. Good serve, and Gapet under pressure. He's going to have to hit this. He almost lives for those shots, doesn't he? And Germany blocking him really well here. <laughs> a little windmill gets a reuse. And Boye on the far side of court. That's more like it from Tonyuti. Brilliant set on the reverse. Just pumps it out wide to Boyek. I'm talking of athletes, well, Boyek. Pretty smooth hitter, and that's great power. Minimum of exertion. On a dit qu'il joue beaucoup de tendu au-dessus de la tendue, d'accord Et il a plutôt aussi tendance à jouer dans son déplacement. Alors que s'il va vers le poste 4, il va jouer tendu au-dessus. S'il va jouer vers le poste, s'il se déplace vers le poste 2, c'est plutôt de l'autre côté, d'accord OK, donc on essaie de s'aligner tôt comme tu as fait et on prend les, 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 les courses d'élan des centraux et on les oblige à tourner, nous on défend comme des mouvements. First technical timeout arrives. Until he knows that his team aren't quite on it yet. As wonderful it is as it is to keep blasting away with those spikes, you've got too big a block to be going past. German side of the net, so a little bit of invention required. Turn this ball off the block, move it around, hit the seam. France need to think their way through this game, and if they do, 3 0 looks on the cards for the home side. Le Goff back at the service line, that brings LaRue back to the front court, France's tallest player. Read that easily for the slowdown block, and Boye lunges at it and takes it out of the reach. The diving Tilly. He would have played that with ease, I think, Kevin Tilly. She gets the kill, though. So, solid start from both teams. France, though, with the advantage. Tilly, three points on the board already. In terms of his contribution, Schott and Hirsch, two apiece for Germany. Oh, what a serve. What a serve. That is an absolute blinder from Ruben Schott. Make it three points for him. And he is done and Gapet. All ends up here. Said he was a good athlete, Ruben Schott, and... 
the smaller players are. They have to be to compete in this sport at this level. Real battler, really vocal as well in the timeouts. Oh, good hit. Maru nice and high. Two centimetres shorter than the man he was just hitting against, but with the advantage of the spike approach, that makes everything a bit easier. Oh, what a wonderful shot from the net cam. That is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Good for beaten, though. No, that was always going to happen. Do you know what? It's just a... It's just one of those contests that's developed over the years. Setter gets beaten on the middle, has to go middle on the next play, and Kevin LaRue knew what was happening. All over it. Good swing from Hirsch. Number 13 shirt for Germany on the opposite position. head-to-head -head for two rotations between Gunther and LaRue. Slightly shorter blocker for LaRue to work against now in the middle for Germany. And LaRue is immaterial with the service error. He's one of the best middle blockers that ever played the game on the German bench, coaching Andrea Gianni. Said Andrea Gardini, another fantastic Italian middle blocker. They had a few of them, remember, over the years. Good swing from Agape. The German wing spiking unit working pretty well out there. Kill this time from Moritz Reikier. Both he and shot similar height, so the jump is crucial. the ball in the high 330s. Three metres and 30 off the ground, that spike point. Nice, really nice set. And after some uh, slightly sticky fingers from Tony Uti early doors, I think we could safely say he's got his setting knee pads on now. Look at this. Oh, what a late, late change. He's fizzed that to Boyer. Not quite a free net, but as good as. Gets it in this time. And a nice shot off the fingers from Hirsch. So after that initial lead was established by France, Germany managing to hold them at the moment, trading nicely. Two points in it. Germany need to score off their own serve. Nice hit. Very well contained. Oh, that is a wicked shot. Goodness me. Yeah, don't look. It's scary. When Stephen Boy is in this kind of form and when Tony Uti is finding him as well as he is, what a set. And what a hit. Block high, stable, penetrating. Fantastic. Just got murdered on that one. Boy, a little overconfident from the service line. Well, that's really good from Tony Uti. It's free net after free net for Stephen Boy at the moment. Forget the service error. Just look at this. Whoa, that's incredible. What a player. Beautiful to watch. No, that's into the net from Ngapet. Well, he's going to ask Laurentilli to challenge here and. 
I don't know that this is a great challenge. We'll see from this angle. Does this hit the blocker? OK, it's a brilliant challenge. Take it back. France are going to win the challenge. We're going to replay the point. Because it didn't come to a satisfactory conclusion, so we have to do it again. So we wait for the final deliberation, the final pictures from Hawkeye to tell us the story, but pretty confident France have got this one. And they have. So, touch called, well reviewed by Ngapet. Doesn't always have to be spectacular where he's concerned, but it is always effective. Just being confirmed by referee Orasi. Away we go, let called. Two thumbs up in the air, that indicates a let from the officials. It's not going to rock anyone except the German fans. Until he misses. Zimmerman, the setter, back to the line. Good front line for Germany. Next three rotations with Zimmerman in the backcourt. That's where you want your tall blockers to be in the front. Reaching over the net and trying to stop this French attack now. Parts have been passing superbly so far. with the program. Good serve. Full marks to Zimmerman. That's his point. Great kill from Hirsch, but that is the setter's point. Wonderful serve to get the overpass. And then a really sweet set to the opposite to get him just the one blocker. But no one near it. So signal from Tony Uti to show what he's going to do here. And the one signal tends to do it. Players know what they're running off that single signal from the setter. Boy, he's the hot hitter at the moment, though, isn't he? Tony Uti going to his big number 12 every time. Look off. Over rotation from Hirsch. Might see a challenge. It's definitely the second technical timeout has arrived if it is France's point. And I th well, it's a challenge because, funnily enough, it's Stephen Boyer that's pointing at the court, saying that's in. Surely not a bit of gamesmanship drawing a challenge from Germany. We've seen it once already, TJ DeFalco, urging the opposition to challenge what they thought was a touch on him, and it wasn't. Here we go then, what does Hawkeye say, in or out? It is in, so Boye's signal was completely genuine. He's just done his team out of a point there. Not sure Germany would have challenged on that one. Convinced, but a good hit from Hirsch as it happens. Very accurate. Shot. Already one ace to his name. Absolute belter of a serve across Ungapet. Can he do it again? No. Here's the answer. So we do finally go to the technical timeout. France still with the two point cushion playing, as always, some delightful volleyball. 16-14 France, then. With the point two, who effectivement attacks a lot the diagonal, you, post-6, Arvin and you, you're too low. Let's go for the 1, and you stay centered, like that, at least we're there. Okay? Uh, voilà. C'est tout. Rien à dire. Sinon, continue. Okay, allez, allez, allez. Si, si, quand même. Ils sont très loin en réception sans se matcher. Ils sont très loin en réception. Donc soit la roulette, soit le smatché flottant court. OK well, Still young, Stephen Boy. 23 years of age. So got a good few years to go before he hits his peak at around about 27, 28. 
That's a terrifying prospect. He's already got just about all the shots that you need to be able to operate at this level. And then when you combine that with a huge jump, he's a sensational player to watch. And just what France needed. They needed that right side to be strong. Boy, stepping into that zone. That's great support for the wing spikers in Capet, Lanil and Tilly. It's a wonderful outlet for Tonyuti to find. Well, there we go again. Right, business end of set one. Germany still in the mix. Uh, the lead increases again. LaRue next to Ngapet. It's not an easy block to beat. Great reach. Quite a disruptive block as well. So good mobility from LaRue and Ngapet, but it's Ngapet that gets all of it. Time out, Germany. A friend of mine went to watch the Champions League finals in Berlin and the great and the good were there. Wonderful stars of world volleyball days gone by to watch. Uh, the lad that went along to watch the final was former middle blocker, one of his heroes was Andrea Gianni. And who did he bump into as soon as he went to his seat? There's Gianni, stood around. He's one of the superstars of the world game. That's a pretty cool hit past one of the superstars of the current game. Ingepet, a bit unstable in the block here. And Hirsch just about getting it past him. He's getting pretty close to that centre line, isn't he, Hirsch? That was nearly over, but it was dead by the time he landed. Oh, what a block! Great read from Bremer. And that's going to upset the local fans. The local boy's been roofed and he hung on and hung on, didn't he? Oh, that's a great piece of work from the youngster in the middle for Germany. So, damage repaired. Oh, goodness me. I kid you not, Stephen Boye in the warm-up was just asking Tony Uti to set him a ball just like that. And he bounced it off the floor and into the stands. The only problem with that particular hit is that I think that might have missed the court. As spectacular as it was, we might be level here. Germany challenge, and it's a good challenge. Andrea Gianni was next to the court. That's where the coaches are allowed to stand within that little zone along the sideline. And he was the one closest to where that ball landed. He was the one that pressed the button on the challenge. Do you know what? If it's out, who cares? It was a beautiful hit. OK, beautiful hit that loses his team a point. We are level. Good challenge. From Coach Gianni. And a little laugh through the net with Kevin LaRue and Stephen Boy. 17 all. Here we go again. France have lost their lead. Germany in the mix here. As casual and as calm as you like. And Gapet. He knew the blockers were waiting for the big hit, showing strong at the net, so he just waited and turned what should have been an obstacle into a target. Great hitting, sensible hitting from Ngapet. Now he goes back to the service line. Oh, dear. What a great set. France pick it up. Touch from Zonga. And a nice swing off the outstretched arms of Stephen Boye. So block out hit from Germany. Shot provides the point. It was Rijkaard, my apologies. So substitutions for Germany while the replay is going on. Lovely finish from Rijkaard. Got have all the tools in the box and on the tool belt when you're outside hitting through the wing. 
Williams, number 16. That's the backup setter, Thomas Kotchian. Which means a double substitution. So on in the front line comes 19, Daniel Malesha. In the opposite position, more height for Germany. And a beautiful dig from shot. No, no, no. Oh, well, they had the chance in transition, but the new man on court, Kotchian, just overcooked it on the set. Not much uh, the replacement opposite player Malaysia could do there. Wasted chance for Germany, and you have to take them in the crunch phase of, of a set against the big teams if you want to win these games. But LaRue helping Germany out with a big serve error. Pass from Kevin Tilly. Oh, yes, right on cue. Kevin Tilly delivers in front of the home fans. Friends and family in to watch Kevin and Dad Laurel performing tonight. And they will have enjoyed that one. Here comes Tanyuti. Back to the service line goes number 11. Cup setter Antoine Brizard got a bigger serve than Tony Uti. Double sub again. Oh, wow. Great touch from the new man on court. No, not this time. He's delivered internet sensation after sensation, hasn't he, and Gapet over the years. But he couldn't quite do it this time around. So that double substitution for France. Also bringing on the heights of Patri, two metres and seven. So both sides employing the double sub. Bremer comes off in the middle, out to have a quick chat with former great. What a super situation that is to be able to talk to someone like Gianni about middle blocking. Sossenheimer then in for his serve. Good serve, well passed though, France. And the speed of Tilly, fantastic. Two great shots in a row for Kevin Tilly. It's a family affair. The Tilly brothers in the crowd to watch on. Both pro basketball players watching Dad Laurel. And their sibling Kevin putting on a great display at the moment for Les Bleus. It's all in the jeans, you know. Nice. What a nice set. That's a really classy bit of work from Kochian. Jumps, turns in the air and just gives a beautifully slick feed to Malaysia. And that'll be the last action from those two. The double substitution will be reversed. It's a bit of a case of well played, you're off. Great shot, great set. Bit of luck with the paintbrush there. Good enough for the kill for France from uh, Nicolas Ligoff. Brushing underneath the ball, feathering it onto the floor. I think Zenga could have played that, that's why he was frustrated. So there's Ligoff back to the service line. 22 21. Germany not out of this by any means. Hirsch having a good game. He's the leading scorer in the match for Germany on eight. He's out wide, but that's not where Zimmerman goes. Goes to shot, and that's caught France a little bit flat-footed. They were expecting the ball on the left side to Hirsch, and they didn't really get organised there. And exploited. France going to have to work to win this set, 22 all, and we know how good this man has been from the service line. Ruben Schott going for another ace, but going way long.
3.22 substitution for France. So the double sub reversed for the French team. They basically flipped the rotation round, keeping the big players in the front line all the way through, which means that server comes round to serve. And it's a setter again, Tonyuti back on court. Yeah, Shin to the block, but out. Slightly more stable, but they are struggling a bit with Hirsch on this right side. Takes his tally to nine. Top scorer by three. Boyer for France on six. Gunther to the back line. Decent run out for Sossenheimer, but he loses his place on court. 23 all. Pass from Drabenikov. It's touched. Brilliant from Gunther. Free ball though, France. Oh, what a stop. What a stop. And that little chat between Bremer and Gianni has done the business. Back on he comes and he's roofed. France's top scorer. Great mobility from Bremer. Lovely reach over. And he's just put Stephen Boye on the floor. Not the best of sets from Tony Uti, it has to be said. And it's given Germany set point. Gunther again. Just making sure the run-up for the serve is all clear of moisture. Big point this for Germany. The fans on their feet. I'm not sure the French fans too impressed with that. And Le Bleu, having been in control of this first set, could lose it. No. Not with serves like that. Well, if you serve and you miss over the baseline, the coach will be disappointed, but they won't be too upset if you shove it in the net like that on set point. That's a no-no. Gapet can win it for France. And he shoves it in the net. Second set point arrives on the Hirsch serve. Will he go for it? Will he put the heater down the middle? France not out of jail yet in set one. Wax it onto Grabenikov. France under pressure. Tilly is roofed. And Germany take the lead here in Cannes. And France's poor run on the VNL continues as they lose a fourth straight set in a row from a position of power. And this will be a concern, and Bremer knew where the ball was going, and he's jumped out of the gym to stick that one on the floor. And that has rather silenced the crowd here in Cannes. Well, it's a town where dreams are made, and at the moment, all those dreams coming true for Germany. 26-24, they stuck with it. They've taken the first set. German fans can enjoy.
Well, wherever you are in the world, we promise you the best seats in the house here on the VNL. But some of those camera angles and some of those camera shots actually inside the game. I think the net cam, my new favourite angle, takes you down to where the players are. When you're out on court in a game like this, it is intense. It's the German flags and scarves waving. It's Germany that lead against the home team. France had a chance there to take that set with uh, relative ease. Three-point lead at one point, but they uh, ended up blowing it. Let's take a look at the German serve placements. They've been fizzing some great jump serves, tending to push towards the centre onto that left side of court. So, generally speaking, Germany trying to target the two wing spikers, trying to give Kevin Tilly and Irvin Ingepet a tough time of it. Certainly, when you've got a front court wing spiker, if you can drive them back from the net, get them unbalanced, it makes it a lot tougher for them to run fast. Have a little look at uh, the two brothers, Kevin Tilly's brothers from France, basketball players. I bet they play great volleyball as well with that height. <laughs> An embarrassment of riches in the one family for the Tillys. So, the legend has done it again. Andrea Gianni guiding his German side to a first set victory. They lead 1-0, set two. Germany in the white, playing from right to left, leading the home side. And away we go. Great opener from Kevin LaRue. No alarm bells yet for the French team. Might just have woken them up after a slightly lacklustre back third to that opening set. It's more like it from LaRue. And it's more like it from Boyet next to Legoff. Lights out. Well, that was slightly fortuitous. I didn't realise it was uh, quite as lucky as that. That was going out of court. It's hit. Blackout on his way down. Pass. Well, that is really good from Reichert. Nice set, nice kill, but every good attack starts with a great reception. Beautiful overhead shot and a wonderful courtside shot. Just look at the height these players get. In some cases, we're talking almost a metre above the net. That's the contact point. Tight net, two meters and 48 in the air. So a little bit of cagey jousting then at the start of set two. Germany mustn't let this slip. They mustn't just be content with winning the first. They've got to go for the jugular here. They've got to get this job done. Nice pass again. Tilly. Shoves it down through the block. His dad was a very good player at international level for France, but I think we can safely say Kevin Tilly one step up on that. This is disappointing from Germany. And uh, I think we'll see a challenge here. This might just be to slow things down. Yeah, that's not hit the block. So this is not going to go their way, I don't think. Despite Andrea Gianni calling for it. But I think this is just Andrea Gianni just slowing the game down. So he's, he had an option here. He could have called a timeout, but that's blowing a timeout early. Or he can call a challenge, which usually takes around about a minute to sort out. And he can just have a word with his players then. The thinking from the Italian coach, the only problem with that, of course, is there's a payment due. The payment in this case is he's going to lose the challenge. And, uh, he'll only have one left. You have to be careful with that. Here we 
go then. So not obvious from that angle. And in fact, it wasn't a block touch they were asking for. It was a net touch. And there was no fall. So either way, Germany lose it. One challenge left for set two. And France with a very, very comfortable lead. Yeah, well played on Germany. Oh, 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 oh. oh that's insane from Le Goff. Nearly. Pinball from Germany. They get it recycled a couple of times. That was real effort from the German side. Can't believe what Le Goff just did then off that tiny little set. That's cheeky. He saw it coming and he nearly hammered that. Tilly tips, France score, and France lead comfortably, and it has to be a timeout now for Gianni. I'm always fascinated to see how the coaching works when you've got coach who doesn't speak the same language as his players. Sometimes the universal language is English, but I know Gianni's English isn't amazing. So it looks to me like chatting away in Italian. And one of the German players translates and away we go. Boy. Yeah, nice. Well, Reichert's got it easy on that rotation because he's up against Ton Uti, the smallest blocker on the French side, the French setter. Very easy for him to go straight past. Not sure where Boyer was going. Yeah, great shot. It was a good pass from Kevin Tilly, but it was a bit tighter to the net than he would have liked. It's fortunate that Tonyuti was front court, so he was able to get high and just ping it all the way along the net. Kevin Tilly to put it away. Gravenikov. <laughs> dismissive kill. Takes it to our first technical timeout. France really in control now of this set. Great shot. Franck and Capet. Just another day at the office. Uh, Stephen, you rest assez loin quand même. Benjamin, tu me fermes toujours la ligne. Comme ça, ok? Sinon, il y a trop d'espace, ça vient. Tilly in the rather unusual position. There's been a few players over the years who've had their dad in charge of the team. Manages the situation very well. He's a really consistent player for this French side. Great service reception, a really powerful hitter. Not the tallest of players. But makes up for it with great timing, great eye. Really good awareness for the game. He moves to eight points then for France, becomes their leading attacker, just one ahead of Boyer, who's gone a little bit cold. That's the number 12. Hirsch still leading for Germany on double figures now, 10 points for the number 13. But all the German hitters doing a good job here. No, net touch from Le Goff. That'll be Germany's point. to make up for it. <laughs> the Goff gets himself airborne and watch Tony Udy put this on a plate. There you go, hit that. That is not coming. 
back. 310, spike reach, we'll see higher. But we won't see it hit much harder. He's a unit, is Lagoff. Nice work. Free net created by Zimmerman, but he didn't quite get the set timing right. So Germany couldn't get an attack away on that one, so easy recycle, transition play, and Gapet, E2 rising, off a standing jump, to clout it at 310. Well, both teams at the moment passing beautifully, so we're getting a really high quality of attack. And everybody, at the moment, hitting at 310. So it's blockable, well, not for Tony Uti. Touches at about 290 on his block. Zimmerman serves, good pass from Ngapit. The passing still continues to be good, but LaRue picked up. <laughs> Brilliant. Ngapit. No, still can't put it away. Dig from Tilly. Germany surely can kill it now. No. Oh dear, well shot. Given the ball because he was up against Tonyuti and he's missed it down the line. France get away with one there. So much target to aim at and he's missed it. The hands miss the court. Germany lose the point. Good recovery, well played, Bremer. Nice dig again from Tilly. He's all over the place in backcourt, isn't he? He's covering everything. Oh, that's clever play, but once again, Tilly all over it. Quick to the wing. And <laughs> Gapeth, no look hit. He's not happy with Ton Uti. It was a poor set. And France lose the point. Bit of showboating there from the French team, but they didn't quite get it to work. Look at that blocking height from Boye and LaRue. Great shot from Hirsch. Shot. On toss on the jump serve, good hit. Well passed by Ngappe. Boyek, not a great set again from Tony Uti, but Boyek manages to get high enough to shove it through the block. Wrong side of court as well for Boyek, usually hits right side, gets that one rotation where he has to play the left side attack. Back to Ngappe, who missed his serve when there was a chance to save France in set one. Off pace, well recovered. And Hirsch puts it away. Rubenikov in the red shirt. France have had the luxury of some very good liberos over the last few years. Most of you will remember Lunatic from Corsica that was Exiga. What a player he was. Yeah, Grabenikov occupying that role. Good shot. Set up cross court, Kevin Tilly, and then just a little no look hit. Goes across his body and works the blocker, Hirsch. Different, isn't it, from the DJ? Burst of river dance, I think, taking the wind out of the Rue's sails. I like the gold seats here in camp.
So, double substitution. We saw this uh, in the first set. It worked really well. So, Zimmerman leaves for Malaysia. And on comes Kotya in the back line for Hirsch. It works again. Came into the game quite a few years ago now, but this idea of flipping the rotation, getting your backup setter on in the backcourt, getting your taller opposite player on in the front, and just changing the rotation round. And not that Malaysia had anything to do with that. That was a, a man mounted Gunther block from almost on the floor, but good play. Good serve from Kochian to set it up. Yeah, great swing. Good pace to the wing from Tony Uti, that's more like it. Just getting through the sets now. He was uh, he was just going under the ball a little bit, Tony Uti, and turning the fingers over. Now he's pushing where he should be, and that's a really nice find. Kuchian going fast to Gunther. The big boy at two meters and 11 just gets himself in the air, stretches the arm out, beats Lagoff, all ends up. And again, we get to see it from net cam. That's wonderful. Right here, good serve. Grabenikov just about contains it. Well, that's just madness, absolute madness from France, completely out of system. The most ridiculous set you'll see. Look at that from a cat pet. On a plate for Tilly. Who just does the rest against a three man block. Incidentally, good work. Now, I know it's nice to watch the whole game, but every so often it's quite good to isolate a player, and why not for the next few points? Just keep your eye on Irving Engepet and his body language. He's not happy that he's not getting set every single ball here. And if it doesn't come to him, his shoulders drop, he wanders in. An interesting character, that's not going to help France. Germany on the comeback trail here, Gunther. Missing his serve on set point, fortunately for him, didn't cost his team. He's just drilled Kevin Tilly with this one. That's moving. Good touch. Gap it. There we go. That's what he does when he gets the ball. There's a little soap opera going on on court for France at the moment. For Le Bleu, Gapet at the heart of it. But when he can do what he does, who's going to argue? It's perfect, eh? One defense more, one that is so perfect, set out. Yeah. Jakob, Jakob, the arm, slowly. And we need the first tempo. Come on, guys. Good English from Matt Gianni to get the important matches he's over. Well, let's take a look at this man. I've been quite impressed with her. She's a bit of a does what it says on the tin hitter. But you know what? He's just basically asking the French blockers to stop him. And if they can't stop him, he's just going to keep killing the ball. He's had a good game so far. 12 points on the board. Needs more blocks. Only has a single block to his name at the moment. He's got a roof, Tillian and Gapet if he can, in that opposite position. But for the moment, doing his job. That's what he's on court to do, and he's doing it well. Although at the moment, he's off on the double substitution. Look off with the serve. Kochian comes in to set, backup setter. Not found anyone with that. Boya goes wide to Gapet. <laughs> I promise you, he lives to kill those balls. I reckon on just normal regulation, in-system play, he gets a bit bored. He likes something a little bit different just to show the world what he can still do on a volleyball court. That is insane. Look off 
to serve again. France all over this one. No, that will be a carry. Ochian going for the one-handed reverse set. Every setter likes to show off the big set every so often, but on that occasion, Ochian getting the timing wrong. The ball ending up landing in the palm of the hand and staying in the palm of the hand. You can't do that. So carry against yeah. Kochian. Timeout yeah. called by Gianni. Shoot over. As a former international middle blocker, Gianni knows what it's like to be in the middle and to have a setter setting that ball quick to the wings. It's tough. It puts your movement under pressure. Love it. I'm trying to clap, but a bit too loud. <laughs> to cover the ears as well. 18-11. France in control. There we go. There we go. Bremer's had a good game as well. So the double substitution reverse, that rotation now flipped back to where it was. Alesha replaced by Zimmerman. And in the front court, Kocian replaced by Hirsch. It's worked for Germany so far. Not got them back into this set, though. Oh, is that into the antenna from Boyer? If it is, it's out. Those red and white sticks at the side of the net indicating the out points. Got to pass between them cleanly to be legal. Is a fault. And there you go. He's not happy because somebody else will set the ball. And on top of that, they made a mistake. Oh dear. That's not who should have been passing there. And that's not a great result. Don't tell me France are going to be the architects of their own downfall for a second set in a row. A mess, and there's no way that LaRue should pass that ball. He's got it. Gaphead stood right behind him, the main passer. A bit clumsy from the big man. Unfortunately for France, Germany and Zimmerman let them off the hook. Good line up now for France. Tony Uti back to the service line. Decent serve as well from the French captain. Nice put away from Germany. They're exploiting the middle really well at the moment. Kochian found Bremer nicely, and now Zimmerman's done it. Yeah, he's running that really well. Look at the height he gets. Nice and stable, and waits for the block to show, turns it the other way. And even one of the best blockers in the world right now in the middle, Kevin LaRue, powerless to stop him. Touch from Zanger. Bremer forced to tip until he goes wide to Boye. Boye gets it all wrong. And that is a slight problem with his game, Stephen Boye, when it's not in line with his body, when it's not all right there, especially on that left side of court. Can sometimes flap a little at the ball. Let's flap this one way over the baseline. Time out, France. Hey, attention, he's serving. He has all the angles. We're going to be patient, like that. Let's go. Okay. Hey, guys, observe. Hey, go ahead, go ahead. Kevin Tilly just warning his players about how accurate the German servers have been. The fact they've been able to pick their zones pretty nicely with the serving. A few too many errors in this set. Now it needs to be there. German fans a little concerned. fans just seem to be happy to party here regardless of the fact their team's 1-0 down nice atmosphere here in the Palais de Victoire so three points to find he wouldn't bet against shot finding it on his serve unless of course he drills it in the net that's the one zone that Kevin Tilly hadn't mentioned 
Back to get ahead. Great shot. Well contained by Germany, but they're under pressure here. Three blockers to beat and beaten beautifully by Reichert, one of the shortest players in that wing spiking position on court at the moment. Look at that. It's thumb down, bends it around the block. Really nice. Gianni just can't avoid being involved, can he? So more substitutions for Germany. Again, the substitution we saw in the first set. So on comes Sossenheimer. He's on to serve and play backcourt. A little bit more mobile than Bremer. And he's not what the coach was looking for. So Sossenheimer, I think, will come off again. Yeah, he does. If Germany had been a bit closer during the middle part of this set, I think France would have been a little concerned. As it is, Germany now doing a good side out job, but still having to find three points on their serve at some stage before France get to 25. That's going to be a big ask. Yes, though, should go for this. No, takes a bit of pace off and Gapet controls it easily. Way into the block. This isn't great from France. Oh, brilliant. What a set from Zimmerman. And what a kill from Hirsch. Takes him to a very impressive 13 points. Great action. You see shapes with the arm, it's the Nike swoosh. That's really what you're trying to affect as you start the spike in terms of the positioning of your arms. And the elbow comes high next to the head and goes over the top to create that lovely whiplash feeling. And all the power from the body goes through the ball. Never had a ball go through the net. In all the years I've been watching, those holes just too small. Doesn't matter how hard you hit it. Germany trying their best at the moment. Double sub France then, so Tonyuti and Boye off. Here comes the replacement setter, Antoine Brisa. Should bring the height of Patry to the net in the front court. It does in the number four shirt. No, not great from Germany, and they've rather fallen away. Zimmerman just got stuck in the hands, never came out for Hirsch. Nice hit. What a nice hit. Welcome to the court for Brizard. team have seen the funny side of it but uh, Brizas nearly had his head taken off there what a shot from like yet sends him back to the service line with a bit of confidence there's still only three points in it no. Germany cannot buy a serve for love nor money at the moment four set points France shot and Gapet put his back into that one whacked it as high and as hard as he could Germany couldn't contain it and France maintain a position of strength through most of that set and look pretty relaxed as they change ends and the crowd here in Cannes much happier at the situation so a rather careless 26 24 loss from the French team in the first set but much more like it 
in the second. He's given that the full treatment. It's in Gapet. 25-20 then. France level the score here in Cannes at one set apiece. So back in control. And France back to looking like favourites for this one. It's been a, a very closely contested match, but not quite enough quality from Germany in that second set to maintain a challenge. out of the woods here France but certainly much more convincing they mean that set two not really delivering the service pressure they would like their big guns finding the floor against a German service reception unit led by Zanger the libero playing particularly well of course when a service reception unit plays well that puts pressure on the server to hit the ball harder hit the ball harder Reduce mistakes. Very much the vogue now, isn't it? And the sensible as well. Sensible precaution for the toddlers in the audience to get the earphones on. <laughs> Tilly Brothers, I'm sure, enjoying themselves. It's your brother Kevin down there on court. All the K's, incidentally, Kim, Killian, Kevin, Timmy. So a face on court by the looks of it, and two new faces on court. France. So Laurent Tilly decided to change things up, but he's He's out on the floor. And, uh, joining him in the number 17 shirt, Spike uh, Trevor Clevenot. 99 Clevenot plays for the uh, Axi Power Milano Club Syria. That's a bit cool, but to say, Tony UT blowing a little bit hot and cold in this match, and uh, Stephen Boyer, after a fantastic start, went completely off the boil, but he's he's on court still, boy. It's clever no that has replaced Ingepet. I can imagine that Coach Tilly was too enamoured of some of uh, Ingepet's antics during that last set. Seemed to be a little disenchanted at times. Clever no. Doing a decent job. Yeah, well, Hirsch just struggling a little bit at the net. He uh, tweaked his ankle in the last set and that's not helped it again. He's landed heavily on the middle blocker. So here she's out. And, uh, coming in to replace him, Malaysia who contorts himself into a ridiculous shape in the air to hit that line. So changes are plenty down there on court. That's a shame about Hirsch, because he was having a great game. But leaves the action on 
on 13 points. Let's hope it's nothing too serious, just a tweak, bit of ice will sort that out. Luck for France and Kevin Tilly. Well, important to uh, assess it straight away, but so if you're going to take the shoe and sock off, you've got to get some other form of compression on. <laughs> oh, that's magic, isn't it? What was that one? Grimace cam from Bremer. Full effort. France have got to be very careful here that they do not go off the boil. Hirsch on the bench, injured, just as the physio just assessing whether there's any real serious damage there. The ice pack will go on shortly. And then nice kill from Le Goff. On the other side of the net, we've got Irvin Engapet, not for the first time, on the naughty step. Lovely shot from overhead. What a great coaching tool that shot is. Showing the movement patterns of the various players on each side of the net. And just killed the ball, goes to the service line. Well, after a really good start to this match, France are struggling a bit at the start of this set. That's on the line from Bremer's block. It's been called out by the end line judge, so Germany perfectly within their rights to challenge this, so they're going to ask Hawkeye if this was in or out. I think we all know what Hawkeye's going to say. He faces on court for France. Middle blocker in the number 21 shirt, Vantelemi Cinanesi. Hawkeye now will put the German team out of their misery. This will be their point, I'm sure. Quite some distance. Good block by Bremer. He's having a decent game. There's the middle blocker. Five points for him. In fact, that might go to six now. That's been confirmed. Yes, it does. Goes to six, courtesy of Hawkeye. Three all. France with half a new team on court. Slow down block. It's only a feeling, but I think we might be in for a long night here. I'm sure France are going to be able to get the job done particularly quickly with this group of players out on the floor. Disrespect for them, but it's not. Tony Uti, LaRue, Ungapet. Take that out of any equation, and that's going to change things by quite a lot. Play with a decent serve. Germany passing like a dream at the moment. And blocking like a dream. Bremer next to Rakiet. Good read. Just positioned his man. In fact, he was shot. My apologies. Just positioned his man, Bremer, to take away the power, and then jumped in shut down on the diagonal. Yeah. I said about that last serve, better. Big man, Gunther, two metres and 11 into the front court for Germany. Swing from Malesha and here's his replacement so far doing a great job. It's the shot, super spike from Malesha, loves it past Clever Knoll. Still no sign of uh, the left hander, Lanil. France at the moment, he would have been the automatic replacement for Engerpet. Well, what a shame, after a really lively start to this match, uh, it's rather gone off the boil. Changes on both sides of the net, and neither of the teams either are able to get any rhythm at the moment. Chinayesi, 
blocker on court for France now to serve. That's better. But he's ah, much taller than the man he's replaced, Tony Uti, in that setting position, so able to produce his own blocks. That's a pretty decent stop. Still a off. Oh, and again. <laughs> he's on fire. Two monster blocks from Brizard. Now look at the movement pattern here. Look how quickly Goff gets out to that wing after making the first jump in the middle and getting it wrong. Closes the diagonal really well. Well, the man no longer on court for France, Evan Engapet. What he can do on a volleyball court is just exquisite. There is not another player like him right now in the world game. No doubt about it. A floor genius, maybe. Sometimes his antics on court, I think, get to the other players and certainly get to uh, Laurent Tilly, who has substituted him out, despite that fantastic kill to finish set two. But he has entertained us for years now, Erwin Ingepet, and it ain't going to stop. He's a fabulous player to watch and enjoy. Overpass, dispatched. The middle players love an overpass. It's already got all the power in it, so you just got to put your hand over the top and it will bounce. Gunther has not hit one in anger yet. Every single one of his middle attacks has been a little tap onto the floor. And actually, he's just used his fist there. You never see players doing that because you've got no control over the ball. It's good enough to get it on the floor from the big man. Back goes shot. One spectacular ace to his name so far, but he's been serving heavy in the French service reception a few issues. Nice pass, Grabanikov. A nice finish from Boye. Looks to be getting back on his game, Stephen Boye. Yeah, put a plastic Bertrand in the background to greet that spike. Belgium, you know, plastique. Brizar. Oh dear. Got all underneath that one. Chat from the uh, French assistant coach. Bonjour, sir. Chinese. Good to give players as much information as you can without overloading and confusing. But for a middle blocker, particularly, it sometimes just speeds up the decision processes. Clever little shot. Clever enough. Well, France holding it together pretty well here. It's actually Germany that the substitutions have affected more. What a shot for Bremer. He's having a great time out there. And he's absolutely nailed this. Straight 
past Trevor Clevenor. Clever Trevor. There's no rhythm at the moment to this set from either team. This is a rather spluttering performance from both sides, but that's world sport. Bit of light and shade. That's what allows us to appreciate when something is truly great. And that is top draw. <laughs> oh, what a monster block from Steven Boyer. Just watch the penetration on the net. That is brilliant. That is just wonderful to watch. Down you go. Yeah, that's really good. Bremer is turning into an absolute pipeline for points here. Takes him to nine. And he doesn't seem at all phased by Chin and Yezi's block. He's just thumping that ball. Good setting from Zimmerman. Reichert blasts another one long. That's too many service errors in Germany. That's four or five now. Service errors from the German team in this set. You can't establish any real rhythm off the back of that. Boyer manages to hit Bremer somehow. And shot manages to miss the court and the block. No challenge, he says to his teammates. That's wide. So, Andrea Gianni doing what a lot of coaches do, calling a timeout just before the technical timeout. So, he wants his team to be off the court for a good long time. Yes, here. remember our two focus. Sir? And Spy. All is it, it, It's important, eh, the sir. It's important. We have five seconds, think about technica, think about rhythm. It's the same for the Spy. Eh, because. Every good coach keeps it nice and simple. So yes, he already tweaked his ankle and then he landed on the big man's foot, I think. Yeah, there you go. It's a weird one as well. That's why a lot of players wear ankle protectors to try and guard against that. You'll notice, particularly coming into the big tournaments and Olympic Games or a World Championships, a lot of players will wear ankle protectors that stop them turning their ankle. But if you wear them too often, then the appropriate reception in your ankle goes. Gunther taken off to have a little chat with his coach. And another big man comes in, Bax Pulek. And the number 15 shirt. Get out to that one quick enough. Oh, Bax Pullet, little blocker, two metres and ten tall, so they've oh, lost a centimetre in that front court with Gunther off. Technical timeout then, another chance for the coaches to talk. I do like what Bremer's doing out on court. He's been a, a real rich vein of scoring. Kevin Tilly remains that stability behind the French performance. Seen some great volleyball. First two sets. Some lovely stuff. We've, we've seen a few decent plays in set three. But since LaRue and Gebet, the coach Taniuti have vacated the court. It's gone a little bit quiet out there, but no problems at the moment for the home team. They lead 16 10. Well, 
pressure, can't beat the block. Not a problem for Baxpole. A little more athletic than Gunther. So just watch him back off the net, gets over the three metre line, drives in with that two step approach, gets high and gets the set from Zimmerman. Function there for Andrea Gianni. Zimmerman to serve. Just clever not. Just to shove that across the front of Bucks Puller's block as he disappeared past his blocking point. Just goes too wide here, the big German. Gave Malesha a nice clonk for his troubles problem with the big middle blockers you can't really stop them moving sideways once they've decided to go there they sweep your way nice touch really well up from the kneel finally on court the lefty and alongside Stephen Boye the man in the number eight shirt who's just played that brilliant piece of defense was also whacking it off the floor in the warm-up he's on for Kevin Tilly Argentina to come. USA on the final day for France here in Cannes. Ideally, they want to take three wins away. Just something at the moment in this French team that isn't working. I just wonder if the Bulgarian defeat in the position of being totally in control of the match has just knocked this team a little bit. They don't look as confident and as comfortable out there on the floor here in Cannes. Serve Grabenikov beaten. Bono wraps it down the line, just takes Zimmerman out of the attack. Uh, good shot again from Malesha, he's working that line nicely. Coach is happy. Levano rolls it over, Germany in control. And the same pattern is developing here again. Germany a long way down, but just like they did in set one, finishing strongly here after the second technical timeout. Super shot, just seeing, you, seeing how Reichert worked it off the hands. The service line again. Really good hit from the service line last time up to pressure the Neil's pass, but goes off pace this time to Cleverno. And in turn, Brizar fires it to Legoff. Chat will open for Zimmerman. Feeds Black's puller again. Good height. Really good contact point from the 15. And it is Black's puller to serve. And you can see what Bruzar wanted to do there. Even though he was down on his knees, he wanted to feed the middle. Fed it nicely. Look off there and ready. Not the most powerful kill, but they will count. Clever enough. Nice pipe. Really well run. Because of all the problems that Bremer's been causing, this middle block, they went with him. 
that left a free net. All shot to exploit. Really nice setting from Zimmerman. But all created because of Bremen. Overpass. No, well contained. Very nice set from the taller of the two setters, Brizard. Jumping, reaching high, just controlling the ball to Legoff. Goff had to be there, and he was. Germany go again, and Bremer does what he's been doing all game. He's going to take over here in a minute as the top scorer. He's into double figures now. And that one, didn't he? It's way up there. Chinignesi yet to make an impact for France in the middle blocker position. Good pass. Oh, wow! What a stop from shot. Not the tallest man on court by any means, but that is a monster block on Boye. Well, Boye's had one of his own this set. Shot's got his own back. Drops the right hand into the diagonal. And puts it on the floor. Well, this is getting worryingly close again for France here. Boye given another swing. Given another chance this time to just do it right. It's the luxury you have setting to elite hitters like this. They get it wrong first time, odds are they'll get it right the next time around. Boy. Yeah. To sneak a point here on his own serve. He might just do that. Pressure on Germany, shot, out of system. Easy dig for Grubenikov. And an easy kill from the lefty, Lanil. Not sure Germany had remembered. Lanil was a left-hander, and uh, when he appeared suddenly with the ball going across his body, they were reaching to the wrong places here. Bremer gets it wrong. Zimmerman certainly gets it wrong. Timeout called by German. Bravo. Last throw of the dice in set three then for Gianni. Perfect high ball. Perfect. Up the side. He defended the ball is a perfect. This is the difference. And aggressive. Aggressive. Plenty of encouragement for France and for Laurent Tilly made wholesale changes in this set and the team pretty comfortable. Five point advantage then, Boyer at the service line, two points required for a 2-1 lead. But that might not be the end of the story there, Germany not done yet. Well, a great pick up from Grabenikov, but no, but his eye just couldn't quite get there. Double sub, or is it? No, Kochien just going to come on, I think, for Bremer to serve. Germany got two setters out on the floor at the moment. Zimmerman will still set. Kochien will just serve and play defence. Oh, wow. Well, I said Chin and Yezi hadn't made an impression through the middle. He's just made an impression there. It's a big dent on the German side of the court. Whoa, what a shot. Super spike, but a super set as well to feed him. Lanil. Good hit. Nice work, but just out. Come back to pull it. And a rather tame end to that third set. But from the 
home fans' point of view, they're happy. So 25-19. France take the set. And they take it on a German era. It's a shame for Baxpola because he's done a pretty good job since coming on for Gunther. And the main issue for Germany remains the same, and I think will remain. Hirsch has twisted his ankle, and as a precaution, they're going to keep him off court for the moment, probably for the rest of this game. So, close game still. 26-24, Germany took the first, but France hit back strongly. 25-20. 25-19, France now just one set away from getting the job done on day one, week three of the VNL here in Cannes. Let's take a look at the highlights. Workman-like performance from France in set three, 25-19 to score. Doing enough. But uh, that lack of rhythm in both teams' performances means no service aces. That tends to follow on when a team is really flowing on this side-out game. Just uh, releases the servers to hit as hard as they want. So let's take a look at what Hawkeye's got to tell us. The set of contact points, always crucial. Germany getting 69% of their service reception into the green zone, which is where the setter wants to be playing from. So not too bad from their point of view. Too many passes being spread around, despite some pretty heavy serving from the French team. From France's point of view, not as many into that green zone, just 57% of ball usable on all attackers. So both Brizar and Tonyuti having to work pretty hard out of the green zone to be able to keep the attackers fed with decent ball and keep the German block interested. It was partial, or part of the reason France struggling in set one. Got a bit of ACDC to get it fired up for set four. Change of ends then, France in the blue playing from left to right, leading this match against Germany. One set to love. Two sets to one even. <laughs> It'll be Germany to serve, France to attack first. Looking to get this game done in four, but Germany might have something to say about that. And that'll do for starters. Overpass put away by Bremer, moves him to 11. Hirsch left the court on 13. Not the best uh, of overpass dispatches. Normally you want to see those bouncing off the floor, but just rolls it into the space. Baxpoiler keeps his place on court ahead of Gunther. Laniel's still out there for France and still swinging away like a good one. Don't know what the French is for man bun, but he's grown one of those since last season. Hirsch looking a little bit sorry for himself. It's a shame because he was having a good game for Germany. But he's twisted his ankle and getting a bit of treatment. Oh. Serve. So the lack of rhythm continues. Serving continues to be an issue.
Nice put away by Patry. He's got a start in this game ahead of Bue in the opposite position. I do like what uh, Trevor Cleverno did just after that pass. It wasn't the best of passes. He's always learning. He took a little look at the baseline to see if that might have been going out, but he was absolutely right to pass that ball. Let's get away with it. Sends Patry back to the service line. Overpass, Linneal takes it. And Bruzar shoves it on the floor. Ugly point every so often, doesn't hurt. Sixteen, Darrell uh, Boulot. Not been on yet, mid blocker in France. Again, German service reception right on the baseline. Then a little step forwards. Just trying to squeeze the server. And Bremer continues to impress. I really enjoyed watching him today. He's not scared, is he, of Chen and Yezi? Lovely pass from Grabenikov. That's what you can do when the setters got the ball on their head. They can run whatever they want. And Brizar here going with the right option. Really nice pipe attack, but on the reverse to Cleverno. 10.8 kilometers per hour. Oh, oh, oh. And Chin and yes, he's finally got his man. Monster block. Look at him reach here. That's a ridiculous block away from his body, and he's a little fortunate that he's hit shot on the shins. Because that was going out, but it's still a great stop. Linnea. Fast fizzing serve, but no wide of the court. Last serve was a shocker. So let's see if he can improve on that. It's okay. <laughs> Chinenyezi is unlocking some absolutely ridiculous angles with his jump. Touches the ball or touches the spike reach. So that's the highest point at which he can touch on the wall. The spike approach is 357. Men's height net is 248. That sort of puts it in context, doesn't it? Planet volleyball for the guys on the VNL. It's very different from the universe that most of us operate in. Incredible stuff. Chinyezi. Great shot, followed by getting thumped in the chest by shot. Zimmerman back to the line. The German set has had a decent game. Well, Bruzar has re realised that the middle at the moment is a really good zone to be attacking through. Jim Yezi and Legoff running it nicely. going past the block of Patri, so he just tipped it over the top. Brizard didn't even go for it. I think Lauren Tilly will be too pleased with Brizard after that. Just see a bit more commitment. Generally trying to keep pace here. France can kill it to go to the technical timeout at 8-6. Good 
serve. Lovely pass from Clevenot. And a great attack from that back line, but it's picked up by Germany. Malaysia. Dear me. Weird point. And Malaysia gets it done finally. And that's hitting against the tallest block on the French side of the net at the moment. Patry, wrong side of court admittedly, but next to Lagoff is a huge obstacle. Red Balloons by Nena. Remember that track? Big serve. Nice touch. Zimmerman lively in the back court. That's what Brizard should have done, but France snuff it out. What a stop. Patry, Legoff, and then Cleveno on the angle. And I think he's just sealed it on that diagonal. No, it's all Legoff. Monster block then. For France, doesn't have to go straight down, just has to go in. But that was a huge hit from Malaysia, and that's a really good stop from the French blockers. So we do get to the technical timeout. France do have the lead, but it's a single point only. Derrière, mais là plus au centre, parce que là il y a personne. Alors que là il y a toujours quelqu'un. Et nous, par contre, les fans, il faut qu'on y aille et qu'on parle. Ok? Dernière chose sur le 12 qui a beaucoup de ballons, il attaque là ou là. Là ou là. Donc on une main là, une main là. Berlin okay, player. Allez, 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 the number 14 shirt. So he'll know quite a few of uh, the German side. Will the Goff. The Berlin players on the other side of the net. And although the German players know Le Goff well from the Bundesliga, knowing and stopping two very different things. Next generation of Tilly superstars just tucking into their tea, watching their uncle. Well, not a call at the moment, cooling his heels on the bench, but watching their uncle's team playing pretty well. And one error. Granted, of course, on the sidelines, coaching. He's had a good game, Zenger. It's a bit of a shame that one just popped off his arms and hit him in the face. So, not the most. Glorious of attempts to pass the ball from the German libero. Never know then to serve again. German reception once again, very deep on the baseline. Moving in, just a single step. Kevin thinks he's got this, and Wilfri uh, Arazi agrees. So if Germany don't agree, they have to challenge. They're not going to challenge. Ivan had a little look at the baseline as a collective, but decided that was it. It's not the French Open, so you don't get a ball mark in the clay, but that have a pretty good idea. Three-point lead opened up here by Cleveno. He's definitely missed that one. round to Max Puller's serve again. Yeah, good work. He's got springs in his legs as Laniel. Julian Laniel, not the tallest of players, only stands 192. Just over six feet two. But when you're that stable in the air, just like Kevin Tilly, can have a good look around, see what's going on, make the play. Lagoff, three point lead maintained by France at the moment. Germany need to kill this one. No, it's not coming back. Decent dig from uh, Brizard, and once again, he's a little unlucky. He's made a couple of really good pickups since he's been on court, but they've not ricocheted to one of his teammates. Neil just jumping, trying to just poke that into the air for Le Goff to play it over, but just carrying it. No, not a great set from Brizard. Good save from Patry. So 
this is what you can do when you're two metres and seven tall. Way over the top of Rakia, he's not happy with his defenders. Not sure the DJ's choice of music there will please Patry too much. touch from the big man and he can't put it away oh wow good reactions from Bremer and that takes Bremer to level with her she's been off for the best part of a two sets so just shows you how important the opposite player was the German team who got, off, well, got taken off with an injured ankle good reaction Bremer Bouncing straight off the floor to make the kill. No, too long. Germany still struggling to find any kind of service pressure in set four. Heavy hit, Rabenikov controls it. Levano off the wing, and he's gone off the block and out. That's a good hit. Terrific pickup, though, by the man in the red shirt. Zinia Grabenikov, what a, what a piece of work. Off a flat-out hit, and then Levano out of system. Great kill. Andrea Gianni forced once again into a timeout just before the technical timeout. What is the difference? What is it? Just two tips, two tips. And after five, I ball. We remove the head. We don't touch the block for the tip. That's 15 and 16, Andre Gianni. First real international coaching role worked wonders with the Slovenian team. That's really what put him in the shop window with regard to becoming a coach. And he became available. Germany just couldn't resist it. Bremer continues to hammer away and makes him the top scorer jointly with Kevin Tilly of France in this match. That ain't bad from a middle player. Decent return of 320 contact point. No wonder Chin Yes is not getting anywhere near him most of the time. Goes for the serve. <laughs> Goes for Patry. Matador like dodge of the ball as it goes past him. Saw Nelly of Italy last week actually hit by a jump serve that he was trying to get out of the way of. Embarrassing. Not a great set. And well balanced, well blocked by the Goff. That wasn't easy. Just adjusted his position nicely. Jump into the line as well from Clever No. Didn't keep his arms in the air. But Goff did the job for him. So, the time out arrives. The chance for Gianni to talk to his men, and the chance for Laurent Tilly to discuss the situation France. Well, we'll hear it time and time again from the coaches, but you don't reach to the ball, you reach across the net where the ball is going to go. We reach those on Chin and Yezi with a couple of exceptional hits and a lovely shot from that. That's that's the camera on the net band. Chin and Yezi's just disappeared out of frame. Break in a completely different airspace. That is block of the game. That's a pretty decent reach in. Got a touch lucky with the deflection onto Shot's legs, but it's a nice piece of work on Bremer, who generally in this match, Bremer's had him in his pocket. Three points in the moment for Chen and Yezi. Oh, 
great pass from Zenger. Good recovery, though, from Shot. Now, it's either got a piece of the block or it's got a piece of Laniel's tentative defence. The way France disagree, then they'll have to challenge. Might have hit the man bump. I don't know. Rubenikov says no touch. But Coach Tilly says no challenge. <laughs> Lest we forget, France uh, have a couple of really decent opposite players. Stephen Boyer not on court at the moment, but the man that's uh, just hit the ball, Jean Patrick, is three metres and 30. I promise you that's off the top of the antenna. That's a huge hit. And at last, we're going to see uh, Boulard on court. on to replace Le Goff in the front line. There he is, the number 16 in the middle. Well, for some reason, Germany thought that a man that had been sat on the bench for the best part of four sets was going to get given the ball. Not a chance. Bucks Buller has been just uh, taken to the cleaners there. Good set from Brizard, beautiful kill from Lanil. limping towards a conclusion here in this game. Now I can shot, fire it up. There's a little look up at the ceiling to the old volleyball gods before he hits his jump serves, and another decent one. A three off pace, easy pass for shot. Well, pick up from Grabenikov. And a great pick up from Zenger. Both liberos functioning nicely here. And off the block and out from Rijkaard. Germany earning the point. Off the back of a really good serve from Schott. That's what set up this rally. Swings in there and some really good defence from both Liberos until Raka finally put it away. Here he goes again. Little look up. Please grant me an ace. Oh, nearly. Good pass, Clevener. Wide. Patri forced to tip again. That's not great setting from Brizard. But that is a phenomenal hit from Malesha. And uh, Lauren Tilly is going to have to press the panic button here. France in danger of losing their way in this set. Timeout, France. Attention, là, prétendant peut-être il va faire une petite roulette, mais on part assez loin et on regarde ce qui se passe, d'accord? Toi, tu es on est en P. Toi, tu fais attention les roulettes au centre. Ok. Ok. Qu'est-ce que tu annonces là, Olympique? Well, the warning pretty clear there from uh, Laurent Tilly to his players. Keep an eye on the middle. Germany attacking down the centre a lot, and testament to that is the fact that Bremer has 14 points to his name. Just to underline the point Tilly's making, on comes Germany's tallest player, Gunther, in the number 18 shirt. Replaces Bucks Puller in the middle. So Germany restored to their full height. Two metres and ten goes to two metres and eleven. Off pace. Oh, wonderful. Uh, so, that is so clever. There's a lot of traffic in that area on court for France as Brizard penetrates from the back line and shots just rolled it straight into the traffic in front of Grabenikov. France's brilliant libero, beaten. Two points in it. Shot second ace. Will the volleyball gods give him another one? No. Coming up, 
back to the line for France. Still far enough away from 25 points for the wheels to fall off, so got to be careful here. He goes off pace, easy pass for Raikab. Easy kill for Maleshek. I'm afraid the new man on court, Bultar, has not done much by way of stopping the ball in the middle. That was a horrible block jump. Just disappeared past the point where he was supposed to be shutting Malesha down. Good Thor again. Decent pass for Klevenar. Been impressed with him since he's been on. And what a pick-up from Malaysia and Germany unlucky. Laniel very, very careful there to let that ball cross the tape before he blocked it down. Good bit of thinking this from the lefty. Perfect. That's completely within his zone to play. And that's a shame because that pick-up from Malaysia was fine. Very, very nice piece of defensive work from the German opposite. So let's see what the our service like decent nice pass though the man who passes it follows up on the pipe France have it into transition Patry off his wing but easy again for Germany now France can kill it Patry happy to at last get a set he can hit there we go And hasn't he been good since he came on? Nice problem to have, which opposite do you put on court for the big games? Patry at the moment, just reminding his coach, Kevin Tilly, that he is available for selection. Timeout called by Gianni. Easy, the ball's perfect for you. Okay. Yeah, one. First, five. Get on, get on. Five. So Gianni's last throw of the dice in set four might be the last throw of the dice in this match because uh, France in control here. Free Berkovic signals to the Italian legend that he's had both of his timeouts. So it goes back to the service line. It was a decent jump serve, first up. Can he deliver again after a timeout? He can. Nice hit, but a beautiful pass again from Germany. And Premier's at it once more. Well, Laurent Tilly warned his men about the middle channel and to keep an eye on it. And I'll tell you what, Chinignesi will be glad to see the back of Bremer because he's got absolutely nowhere near him in this match, apart from that one block. He doesn't know what to do. Bremer, 15 points for a middle blocker. Superb. Double sub. Kochian comes in for Malaysia, so they're going to flip it. Or are they going to flip it? Because they don't have... Uh, they don't have Hirsch to bring on. So it's got to be another player to come on to make that double substitution effective. Number one, finally, the captain. Christian from for his troubles. Doesn't even get to have a block because his teammate shoved it in the net. So, not great. 22-18, Patry with the serve. There's this thing where he bounces it on the floor, Patry. It comes off off the last bounce into his hand and he throws toss That'd be my favorite pre-serve routine and players have got all sorts of them there we go right like here hit the ball three times into the floor bounce three times into the floor feeding here three off pace again and gets away with it well, last hit from Patry was high and hard, and the German players thought it was going to be the same again. So they committed to the block, overcommitted too early. 
too easy for Patrick to put away. For once, Bremer beaten. Goodness me. <laughs> the pesky lefties, when they get it wrong, it goes really wrong, doesn't it? I prefer the uh, front row ducking for cover for Neil. Two points away from winning the game. Germany, though, three points away from getting this level. And it's not going to happen, is it? He's serving like that. And that's been the one element of Bremer's game that has let him down tonight. But let's not take away from the fact that as a middle player, he's contributed 15 points for this German team. But it's not enough to stop France getting to four match points. Allez Le Bleu. Genoese to serve. Oh, 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 dear me. And that is a monster block. Captain Christian Fromm given the hospital ball for the last hit. And he's whacked it straight into Klevenau's block. Well, Andrea Gianni knows the score. He knows that his team got pretty close on occasions there in that one. Not the best from this French side. They're going to have to improve up against Argentina and then USA on the final day. But as it is, they avoid back-to-back -back losses in the VNL. And they make up for last week's 3-2 shocker against Bulgaria. France threw this one by three sets to one against Germany. 26-24, Germany took the first set. But back came France. 25-20, 25-19, 25-20. Get this one eventually across the line. So a little look back at match point because it was one to enjoy. Down you go. Great block from Cleveno on the German captain Christian Fromm, whose first hit in the game is unsuccessful. It is clever Trevor getting the job done. Trevor Cleveno. With a fine finish. Yep, leave it hanging. Why not? So, French fans can celebrate. They will see Le Bleu play better than that this weekend, that's for sure. But professional sport, international volleyball, is about getting the job done. And France have uh, had a bit of fun and got the job done. 25-20 then in that fourth set. A little bit closer than it uh, actually looked. But those four blocks, those two ace serves, enough pressure from France to get it across the line. And they outscore Germany on attacks just. That keeps the scoreboard ticking over. But decent organisation in the block from France is what you'd always expect. And that, that was, in the end, the difference. So France moved to second, just behind Iran in the table. Pretty close at the top. And pretty close at the bottom as well. Australia, China, Portugal, all with just a single win apiece. Germany with those first two wins in the opening two games of the season, keeping them just above the other challenger teams. So let's take a look at what we've got coming up tomorrow. More entertainment, USA, Germany. That'll be interesting. See if Germany can recover from this one. See if USA can just uh, put together a more fluid performance than they did against Argentina earlier. And then Argentina, I think they'll fancy their chances against France. They will want to take it to Le Bleu in the evening. So nice lineup for you on Saturday. And then reversing those fixtures for Sunday, finishing with France versus the USA. That's it then from Cannes for today. Thanks very much for your company. And once again, thank you for being part of the game.